Are you ready for the best damn sports radio show on the planet? Man, our nation, rise up. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host, Mike, Buck, and Cone? You know they come to the same sports talk than what you about to hear right here. I second that. Go. You know that it's us when we talking about sports. Giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, tell us some more. Oh no, your station not dropping no music. Strikes like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Down four in the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck Mike and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're out the dark. No LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inches, won't cut short. Got the best talk in this all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live off three speaks. Go. And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Buckhasher here with the Man Hour. Head over to manhourradio.com right now. Check out the blog section. Of course, check out the merchandise section as well. Of course, if you're over here on youtube.com forward slash man hour, you become a member today. As little as $2.99 a month, you get access to the after show. You get access to behind the scenes footage. Of course, all access to the man hour crew themselves. Of course, you got the $5.99 deal as well. You get a free t shirt after six months. And then for the nine ninety nine deal, you get a hoodie every year you are a member with the Man Hour. But let's go ahead and welcome the man, the myth, the legend himself, Brandon B.C. Combs. What's going on, Combsy? What is going on, Buck? What's going on, Man Hour Nation, Big X Radio? Man, it feels good to be back on this damn show, man. Yeah, like sometimes, Combs, like we just mean course you've been busy with work and life but like sometimes you just need to take a step back and like recharge the old batteries and get that fire back and yeah. i can like i can see that in your eyes like you, you had the fire tonight you're like you're like your cubs aren't doing very 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 well the bears yeah. are going to make a horrible draft pick in a few days so i feel like you like you're going to have a a lot of rage coming out of the <laughs> Add your microphone there, later today. There might be some yelling going on tonight. I, I ain't going to lie. I mean, look, like you said, the Cubs aren't doing well. Nico Horner, though, has been a, a bright spot since he's come back. He's still on fire. I love watching that kid play baseball, but you're right. I mean, look, they're they're down right now to the Braves 4 nothing. They gave up four runs in the first inning, so it's it, it's tough to watch sometimes. See, it, it is funny because I have a Braves fan at work as too. Shout, shout out to uh, Mike over there. At the old uh, IT department, he is a guy that trained me, and he is a Braves fan. And he oh. was saying the same as same exact thing as like you are. Like I'm so depressed with my Braves. Like I don't know what know what know, know what to do. I'm like, dude, they scored score like 15 runs versus the Cubs. Like, and then like, and then he's like, well, true. But then we gave up like 14 like the next day. <laughs> so <Yeah>. I mean, <laughs> that's. That series was a good series. It did, man. I mean, they the Cubs won thirteen to four one day, then lost thirteen to four the next. And you know, the Braves haven't been Braves haven't been the Braves. They haven't been as good. There's a lot of teams in baseball that haven't been as good as I thought they would be early. So, yeah, I mean, so I mean, obviously, it is still it is still 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 young, still young season. There's still a lot of baseball to play. Definitely time to turn it is, turn it around. So, speaking as not as good as I thought they were, where's Wyatt? Uh, there he is. There's D. Wyatt Williams <laughs> at Man Hour underscore TWW Wyatt. What's going on, man? How was your day? Oh, it was good, man. Uh, just had school, came home and napped. I mean, I, it's about as dangerous as I as I really got. I mean, oh, so you I mean, go to school for six hours, you come home and you nap, and then you get to be on the Man Hour. Why? You much. know what I did today? Wow. I I, I woke <laughs> up at five o'clock for work. I left my house at five forty-five for work. I clocked out of work at six a.m. and and then came home and <laughs> ate my dinner while I prepped with you guys in the background. So, yeah, yeah. If it makes you feel better, I haven't had dinner yet. I mean, at least that doesn't make me feel better at all. Wyatt. <laughs> <laughs> here is here is my dinner, boys. A bag of Doritos. Um, yeah, that's a that's a dinner of champions right there. <laughs> right there. Yeah. So is that party size, man? How many Doritos you eating? Oh well, there. I the bag's gone, so you tell me. <laughs> no, no. Uh, that's so we buy like three or four bags of chips like every like every month, and you know it lasts like I just like I just like just like all a month. But send. So let me ask you this, Coy, question, Combs. Do you guys got a White Castle up there? 
Oh my god, yes, I had that for dinner last night, actually. Dude, stop it. I had White Castle for dinner last night. Stop it. You're joking right now. I swear to god I did. I swear on my mother's life I had White Castle for dinner last (laughs) night. So Cindy and the boys had White Castle tonight for supper too. So apparently this is like a White Castle reunion. The worst part about White Castle is that the next day it smells like White Castle. (laughs) Oh, dude. I was at school all day, right? And I am like I I I do not I'd hate to be the guy that sits behind you. I do not fart in school. I don't use the restroom in school. Nothing like I just it, what? the whole the whole, public restrooms just Dude, are so nasty. There is no way you don't fart in school the day after eating Whitey's, bro. There's a I, reason why I, they call those burgers I, sliders. I held it the whole day. My <laughs> stomach started hurting. My stomach literally started dude, hurting, dude. I'm telling you, no, I got I, mean, I, I got in the car look, today riding I'm home. I'm not holding it in at work, man. I'm telling you right now, I'll clear out the office. I ain't dude, scared. I, <laughs> I was, I, I got in the car today and like the seat cover started melting behind me because oh, I'm sure. I just let a full day's work just let her eat, man. Chris let Bryant just hit a game tying grand slam. It's four to four. Sorry, I saw that. That was a nice one. Three fifty eight. So, Jeez. so, you, so basically, you guys are love your White Castle, right? I mean, like you think the White Castle is the greatest thing since sliced bread. So, like. I'm weird. Like White Castle, I've got to have White Castle like once a year. That's when it's good to me. I can't have it a lot, but if I have it like once a year, I'm, that's perfect. Do you want to know why? Why White Castle is the most overrated restaurant in all of America? No, nope. Raisin Cane's. No way. No, Raisin Cane's is the most overrated restaurant on planet Earth. Chick Fil. And with that being said, Raisin <laughs> Cane's is not overrated at all. <laughs> Come on! I don't like raising things that much either. I think they're yes! overrated too. Yes, I love yeah. you, Combsy. Yes, sir. You know what else is an overrated chicken sandwich? Is Popeyes? The Popeyes chicken sandwich is very overrated. Stop, mm. Combs. I feel like we're the same person here. Uh, we got to stop <laughs> this, man. It's Chick Fil A goaded. Do you love Chick Fil A? Oh yeah, dude. And you, when I have the waffle fries, I have to have the barbecue sauce to dip the waffle fries in. Oh, wow. see, I don't get barbecue. Yeah. I get the Chick Fil A sauce, but that's fine because yeah. barbecue there is good as well. But their Chick Fil A yeah. sauce. You get me. You give me a Chick Fil A sandwich, some of those waffle fries, uh, yeah. and, and some Chick Fil A sauce. That is the key that's, to my heart. That's that Aubrey's is how Nikki favorite, got man. me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's I'm just kidding. I, I pay her Nikki to stay got around because she's the only girl that's ever responded to you when you've that's, talked. That's that's true. That is that is true. I have to pay her ten bucks a month. <laughs> so what? Let me ask you this. So, she's way um, too hot for me. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's true. She is definitely way too hot. And, yeah. You and definitely you outpicked your coverage dude, on that one. My, my my friend's mom told me one day. He was like, "Do you have her like shackled up at home? Because it just doesn't make yeah. sense." I was like, I've, "Oh, thanks." <laughs> I've told you before to tell her that if if she needs help, just to get on camera and blink twice, and we'll we'll send help. <laughs> so true story, why here. Me and you ate lunch on Tuesday, and you were about 10 minutes late coming to lunch. Uh, no, I was one minute late. I got are there you, one minute late. <laughs> are you consistently late to everything? No, I am yes. not. No. Okay, not. so true true, true or false, Mr. The Wyatt Williams at man out underscore T-W-W, were you over a half hour late to your own friend's birthday party? How do you know this? No, true, I told you this last night. I told you that last night. Gosh, dang it. That's true. That's true. Why, Wyatt, look. True or there's false? The, you don't the one thing that I've always taken with me. On <laughs> the one thing I've always taken with me from the Marine Corps is if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. Yeah. Well, when it comes to like, like I would never be late to like this show or a broadcast, like something like that, unless hey, if something like terrible happened. Nana what just time does threw you under the start? bus, man. 740? Uh, 730. 730. And oh, oh, okay, no, 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 no. We'll give you seven forty. Let's say pre-show starts at seven forty. What time did you show up t- today? Seven forty. Five. It's like seven forty-six, seven forty-seven. <laughs> not there. Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh my gosh! Wow. So, so why? <laughs> one thing you need to learn about, you know, being a man. For one, you poop in a public place any chance you get. No. Because because if if you are getting paid, I'm getting paid to poop. I am pooping out yeah. like at work 100 yeah. percent uh, of the time, all the like just like all the time. What's Number that two, saying, Buck? Some, something about a nickel and a dime. I poop on company time or something. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, 100 <laughs> percent truth on that. And then number two is you learn how to be uh, um, uh, uh, 
uh, punctual. You need to learn how to be on time to things, a.k.a. at least five to ten minutes early, always. I so, will be from now on. You have my word. Okay, so 426 at 810 p.m. here on Man Hour Nation, YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour. Why it says he will never be late again. <laughs> 427 at 8 at 815 school Are we Star playing liar liar eight. right Why now? Just... <laughs> Cuz that's clearly one of the lies. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so so Nana said oh. uh uh Combs his 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 papa said the exact same thing about being 15 minutes early as being yep. on time. Yeah. So he said if you're 30 minutes early, you're early. If you're 15 minutes early, you're on time you're and on if you're time. on time, you're late. Yeah. Uh, so, if, if you're so, not 15 minutes early, you're late. So, guys, here in the chat, who here is that type of person? Or like, are you punctual? Are you always early to something? Me, yeah. like 10 to 15 minutes early, or are you like why and always at least two minutes late to everything? My shift starts at seven. I'm always at the office by 6:30. Oh God, yeah. what? Dude, it's. Look, man, there are two things in life you need to know about being an adult, Wyatt. Once you get a real job, for one, <laughs> you dress for the part that you want, not the part that you have. Dress for success. And, and, and two, you always are the first one there and the last one to leave. That's how you get ahead. Well, so, like, I am that, that way with, like, broadcasting and stuff. Like, I'm always the... No, I, I, I'm always the first one in the studio and stuff every day. So, so okay, like, okay, I feel like, okay, so hang on. No, so you you're weren't saying, today. So you're saying lunch, lunch with me wasn't as important as broadcasting. No, huh? I'm not. <laughs> That's what I got out of it, right, Colts? And, and you have never been the first one here for any of the prep ever. I I used to it's be all, all the time. Buck. I used to be all the time. Then oh, what happened? Okay. Then I stopped because everybody was showing up at 40, and now that I show up at 40, everybody throws up at 30. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump into the comments here. Stacy says, I am always early. Nana says, I am always lur- or like, like, or just like early. Nana uh, is early always all the says, time. says he is always early. But then Drew wants to c- c- come in and say, I'm with Wyatt. Let's go, so, Drew. So th- that's why Drew is over on Facebook, guys, and not on the YouTube channel because he's always late, <laughs> right? No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> so, so speaking of being late here, Madison Bumgarner, guys, threw a no no, perfect or a complete game shutout. It wasn't a perfect game because there was an error, but it is not going to go in as a record book as a no hitter or a complete game because it was only a seven inning baseball game. However, with the rules that have been adjusted when we play double hitters, we only play seven innings now. So, therefore, it counts as a full win. It counts as a full loss. Your batting average counts as like a full game, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. We, we, we kind of touched, touched on this just a tad bit last night. But, Combs, you are the baseball connoisseur. How do you think about this complete game, no-hit complete game for Madison Bumgarner that it isn't going to go in the record books as a complete no-hitter? If this isn't a no hitter, and you don't think this is a no hitter, you're an idiot. Okay, because l- let me ask you a question, Buck. If you go, if you're playing in a game and it's bad weather, but you get through five innings, right? They consider that a complete game, do they not? And they call the game after five, as long as the home team is winning. Correct. So say they're gonna. I'm, 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 it, I'm sorry. It, if you're in a game and it's raining and it's after the fifth inning and the home team is winning right. and they decide to call the game, that's a complete game, correct? I believe so. So yes. if you're in that game and you have a hit streak going, but you're 0 for 2 in that game, that's the end of your hit streak, correct? Yes. Okay. So last year they played 60 games, right? Only 60 games in a shortened season? Mm-hmm. They had a World Series and a champion, correct? Right. So... How can baseball say, all right, so, it, you know, shortened games count, shortened seasons count, but now because he was in a, a seven-game doubleheader, we're not going to count it as a no-hitter. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. You're, you're, no, yeah. How it's do like, we not count it? It was a complete game. It was a no-hitter. And you shortened the game to seven innings, not Madison Bumgarner. Yeah. Right. Like, I, I don't when understand here, here's, how Here's the thing, count. too. I question for you guys, a math question. So seven ninths is seven. It's point seven 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 continued, right? Um, 
does it go in the win book? Uh, uh, does it go in the record book as a point seven seven seven, or does it go in as a one? So, so back in nineteen ninety one, from from what I've heard through the gray vine, and I, I'm just regurgitating what I heard here, is that if a if a game doesn't go nine innings, just like what Combs said, if it was like it rain out after the sixth inning or fifth inning. It goes in as the record book as a significant game, a a significant complete game. It doesn't go in as a no hitter. It doesn't go in as a a perfect game. It is a significant game. That's it. So, it's it's kind of like putting the asterisk by it more. Yeah, but I'm honest. just saying, like in in the record book, in the win and loss column, it's not. It, it doesn't go in as a point seven 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 continue. Yeah, no, does it? Doesn't. It goes in as it goes in as a one. Right. So therefore, that means it's a full and complete game. Yeah. So if if you pitch a no hitter through four innings right. and they call the game after, if you pitch it through one inning and they call the game after, if it can go in the we, win we, and we, loss we have column, play, you have to play five. Well, yeah, I know. I'm just yeah. saying, but if it goes in the win and loss column as a win or loss as a right. one but in either column, then it should be a no hitter. And like I said, if anybody was playing in that game yesterday, they're only playing seven innings. If you're zero for two or zero for three with a walk or zero for two with a walk. That's the end of your hit streak. So that counts towards that streak. It counts for any other record that's going. So you're going to tell me it counts for every other record except for a no-hitter? I mean, that's – I I don't know, man. I The players were celebrating it like it was a no-hitter. Bumgarner right. celebrated it like it was a no-hitter. The fans celebrated it like it was a no-hitter. Because it was a no-hitter. It's a, it's a no-hitter. It's, no, I don't, no, guys. Like, I mean, so the reason why it is not a no-hitter because it it's been in the rule book. I mean, I mean, it, mean I mean, it's not like they, they just like pull it out of. It's like, also in the rule book air. that you play nine inning double headers. True, but they've shortened that because of COVID. Like that's not. I like I don't know I I don't get it I, and I I get the premise of like he didn't do it in nine innings. Like, but so what? So you you still to to me? I mean, when you're looking at it right now, who's the defending World Series champion? Dodgers. Okay. So are they still the World Series champion? They played sixty. They only played sixty games to win a World Series, right? Do they? Yeah. I mean, th- so then technically they're not the World Series champion because they didn't play as many games as the rest of the teams that have won a World Series. So, Combs, let me ask you this question here. Let's say a pitcher doesn't pitch in the bottom of the of the ninth inning. So technically, that pitcher only throws eight complete innings, but has a perfect game through eight, you know, through the ninth inning, and they didn't have to play that bottom of the ninth. Does that count as a perfect game, or is that still just a significant game? Because because te- technically, they could have got three hits, right? To well, you always have to game. play the. You always have to if you're pitching, you're pitching in the ninth inning because then you're pitching the top of the ninth inning, right? So yeah. you, you, you're to, still yeah. pitching nine innings. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking the home team. Yeah. But if they bring it, say they bring in because you you you've thrown 160 pitches and your arm's about to fall off, so they bring in a relief pitcher. They just call that a, a joint, a joint no hitter or a joint perfect game, and we've had that plenty of those, you know. And I just, mm-hmm. I don't know, I, I I don't like it. I don't like the ruling. I don't like the the message that MLB is trying to convey because they just contradict themselves. And Rob Manfred is a freaking moron. <laughs> Bingo, best uh, uh, commissioner in all of sports, right, guys? Moron. All right, guys. So we are going to, we're up against our first break here. On the other side of the break, we're going to dive deep into the NFL draft. We got some comments coming across here on the board, guys. We're going to address those as well. So, guys, definitely keep the comments coming. Engage with each other. Have great conversations. As Toy says, Manfred for president uh, here. So, we're going to go ahead and mute, 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 mute him before he gets too carried away here. But, guys, we'll be right back here on the Man Hour live, Raw Uncut Sports Talk. We'll be right back.
And welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckeyes along with Brandon Combs and the White Williams tonight at Man Hour underscore Combs, at Man Hour underscore TWW. And, of course, you can follow me at Man Hour underscore Buck. But before we get into the next segment, Combs, tell the people about Angel with an A that is just a few days away. Yeah, so Angel with an A Memorial Motorcycle Ride for uh, Angela Dewey, $25 per rider. You also get uh, every $25 buys you another car. Top 10 poker hands win a prize. All proceeds go to a scholarship fund in Angela Dewey's memory. Every $250 donated by Man Hour listeners. Man Hour will donate an additional $25. If you want to donate, just contact Jesse Dewey at jesse underscore dewey at yahoo.com. Guys, this is a really good cause just around the corner. I know the, uh, it's going to be a little chilly up in Vermont. On May 1st, but, you know, it, it's a good cause. There's still going to be lots of riders that are planning on going. I believe they've got over 100 riders right now in this thing. Awesome. So it's, yeah, it's huge. So it, if you're a motorcycle rider, you want to take the trip, look, Vermont, that's the one thing about Vermont. I'll never want to move back there, but it's very beautiful up in that part of the, the country for sure. The entire Northeast Coast is amazing. Yeah, for sure. And it's great for motorcycle rides, so. Except for Jersey, right? I mean, there's a reason why the Statue of Liberty faces faces the opposite way. Exactly. Well, Jersey's not in the Northeast. Yeah, that's true too. So it's pretty close, isn't it? It's no. North. It's more. It's more here. like just east, east. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Welcome back to the Man Hour. If you're going to miss any part of the show whatsoever, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, and now Amazon Music as well. Or if you like to watch the videos of us, uh, youtube.com forward slash man hour, you can head over to there, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and you get a, not- a notification every time we upload a new clip. We try to clip out every part of the show that we talk about, different segments and transitions. So if you want to hear about how bad the Chicago Bears are going to suck this this year, you look at the clips and Chicago Bears suck, and then bada bing, bada boom, there's about a five, ten minute <laughs> Clip, clip, clip there of us talking about the Chicago Bears. Mainly, Combs going off on how bad Virginia and uh, Rob Pace are, are like doing there, right, Combs? Don't, don't get me started. Don't, <laughs> don't do it to me. All right, guys. So the NFL draft is three days away. April 29th is the uh, official first round here, and the uh, number one overall pick is the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they are going to Zach, draft Zach Wilson per Chris Sims. So. First things first, guys. Let me ask you this question. With the draft just days away, why I'm going to kick it to you first. Who is the biggest riser in the NFL draft so far? Oh, man, that's a good question. I would say uh, since – are you saying like since we've got the whole uh, draft kicked off? Right, yeah. So so many people are seeing, you know, Mac Jones climb up the board. You know, like, you know, he was projected to be the fifth – quarterback and now he's possibly the second one going going off the board yeah so um I think you know Mac Jones is a really good candidate for that because Mac Jones you know when first started out you know they were projecting him to be a um you know second round pick early second round maybe even late first now he's jumped his way all the way up to three so I don't think he should go there but he's jumped his way all the way up there another one to look at is Davis Mills uh out of Stanford the quarterback there uh you know he has made some incredible jumps he was actually in the first mock draft put out for this class he was a seventh round pick uh projected and he's jumped his way all the way up to an early second uh late first so that's a huge jump as well you know there's there's been a lot of guys that have kind of you know skewed all over the place but I think those are the two candidates that come to mind uh you know Davis Mills making the biggest jump but i would say mac jones made the most significant jump because he ended up landing in the top he'll, he'll end up going in the top five so way to take my player and make it into your own uh combs who is your biggest draft riser um you, you know to be honest with you i i was gonna go with davis mills too um but i i yeah i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to go with um I'm going to go with the team here because I, I really do, and I know people are going to call me a homer for this, but I think the Bears are going to trade up, and I think that they are going to do so by, by giving away a very big-name player, which we'll talk about here in a little while. But that, that's what I think is going to rise the most in the draft. I, I really think that the Bears are going to move up. Do I think that they're going to need to make the right pick? Probably not because that's not Ryan paces forte he will get fleeced in a trade and then he will trade all the way up to eight and draft davis mills 
Yeah. Uh, so I am kind of glad you both went like quarterback. You know, with the uh, with the uh, uh, Mills guy from Stanford. I have seen some people say he is he is projected to go in the first first round now, which that would be huge for him because you know he he was projected to go third and fourth 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 round here just a few weeks ago. But another quarterback here, let's go ahead and stay in Power Five conferences that's been overlooked is Kellen Mond, the quarterback from Texas A A A and M. He reminds me so much of Dak Prescott, not like the not like the intangibles, but like just like being overlooked because, you know, he he was at Texas, Texas A&M. Texas A&M, I believe they beat LSU this season, right, guys? I mean, like they were a damn good football team, and they were ranked uh, – they were just outside of the playoffs, I think, as well. And, you know, yeah. usually a quarterback leads you to those thoughts, and Kellen Mond was the quarterback for a, A&M. Why, yeah, well, you, you know, you mentioned – um, you know, you think of him not just as a as a player. I, I I think of I think of him as a player. Whenever I think of him and Dak Prescott, I think that they're extremely the the same because you know they both got big, powerful bodies. They mm-hmm. can run past you, but they can also throw it over your head. Um, you know, yes, he's been overlooked in a sense, and that reminds me of Dak Prescott. But you know, like I say, even their play style, uh, I think that they're extremely similar. Um, I think they initially almost mirror each other, especially at the college game uh, when they yeah. were headed into the league. So I think that's a that's a great one for you. And Jalen Jalen Phillips is another guy that I was thinking of too out of Miami. I mean, he wasn't really projected to go too high uh, yep. when the first you know mock drafts were coming out, and now he's you know looking at maybe late first round, early second round. As an edge rusher out of Miami, he, he that kid's stock has has risen dramatically. Too. I, I I saw I saw a mock earlier with um he was going I think it was like fifteenth overall. Like they've got him as yeah. a mid first now to uh and and the it really the reason why Jalen's risen so much is because uh Gregory Rose I'm I'm gonna totally botch the last name here Rosu I believe it is um welcome to my world. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Gregory Rosu has dropped down so much. He's the other end, of, of course, out of Miami. And Jalen has kind of shown, you know, what he can do. And he's he's risen a whole lot, too. Yeah. So one also quarterback name that I want to throw out to, out there to you guys. Very, very few people have heard of this guy at all. Only like the hardcore draft people have really heard of this name. So get out your Google think fingers here guys and look up the Jamie named Jamie Newman he is a quarterback from Wake Forest he is he, he yeah. he's project, he's he's projected to go about the fifth or sixth six six round pick but you guys want player comparisons and we're like hey we're always looking for like that next goat right this is Tom right. Brady S written all over it this guy I saw him play versus Louisville a couple years ago and uh, he lit Louisville up. Yes, Louisville was down, but I mean they scored like eighty some points, like just like and that game. And he had four or five touchdown passes, just like and that game. And I don't know about Tom Brady esque, but I mean that's look that's a very tough comparison to make for anybody. He, he is <laughs> he is he is six four, two hundred and thirty pounds coming out of college, and he runs a four eight. What no, and, and that's great, but that's even <laughs> yeah. another reason why I wouldn't call him Tom Brady S because he's big and he's fast. Tom Brady is not four eight fast. I, Come on now, why can I said four eight? No, I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but no, no I, I, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the kid. I just I don't like um. You know I. I mean, maybe. I mean, you never know. I mean, nobody would have said when Tom Brady was picked that, oh, hey, this. I mean, I oh. remember watching a couple weeks ago, I watched the uh, the draft that Brady got picked, and I was watching Mel Kuyper talk about Tom Brady. He's like, hopefully he can, uh, you know, he, he's got good accuracy and, and he's, you know, dependable. Hopefully he can stay helpful, healthy, but I just don't think he can overcome his immobility. Well, I think he did an all right job at overcoming that immobility. So right. yeah. you never know. But I just, I mean, that's just a tall, tall task to put on a kid coming out of college. Be well, Tom Buck, Buck had to mention whenever he came through and beat Louisville, of course, whenever Jawan passed, the biggest college bust of all time was at quarterback for us. But uh, I'm going to mention this year, I got to watch Newman play in person this year whenever Wake Forest and Louisville squared off. Um, and, you know, it, it was a... 
not a good game because both teams are so bad, of course. But you know, <laughs> the quarterback quarterback play wasn't bad. I, I know I liked watching Newman play. You know, wish uh, Louisville would have played a little better on their side. Hey, still came out with the win though, so I'll take it. But yeah, New- Newman, Newman, uh, I like Newman. So let me throw another great college quarterback name. Mike LeBlanc is in love with this guy 100%. The Texas, Sam Ellinger. Texas long court quarterback Sam, say that. Sam Ellinger. He is projected to go 5th to 6th, 5th to 7th round. He is basically the 12th quarterback prospect here. Uh, many people are comparing him to Nate Staley from Iowa from last year. Who is that? No freaking clue, right? <laughs> That's uh, so, why they're comparing him to him. <laughs> is it like it just but 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 Sam Ellinger had a great college like he was arguably the second best maybe even the best quarterback ever to come like come out of te- or like like oh. stat wise in Texas here I mean, no Vince he, Young Colt McCoy, Vince Young blew Vince him out Young. the water Colt McCoy so, too yeah I, I mean I'll I'll say Ellinger's top five but only because he stayed for his senior year. Well, I mean, stats are what people compare at, you know, when they look down the, the record books in four, five, six, six years. They don't re- they don't remember that Vince Young was the most electrifying college player ever. They don't remember that. Cole the, no, but they'll see his like, natty. They'll, they'll see like that he won a national title. Right, true. So do you guys think Sam Ellinger has a NFL career at all? Sam Sam Ellinger is one of those guys, and I've done a lot of research on Sam because I liked Sam a lot last year, uh, and I thought he was going to go to the. I think he, if if Sam wanted an NFL career at best or at his best shot, he should have went to the draft last year. But with that being said, I have done a lot of research on this kid, and I can tell you right now, Sam Ellinger is one of two things: he will get drafted and go somewhere, and he will be a starting quarterback. For his entire career, or you will never hear his name again. There will be zero middle of the road. Like you, will, Sam Ellinger will either be a household name and a guy that everybody is like, "Oh, I can't believe we miss on him going through the draft." You know, cough, cough, Dak Prescott, Tom Brady, something like that. Not comparing him to them, uh, but just like falling in the draft wise, I'm comparing him to them. He is one of those guys where he will fall super late in the draft, and he will be surprised everybody become a starting quarterback. And have a good career, or we will never hear his name ever again in our entire life. <laughs> this, this is this is the most Wyatt take ever. Okay, this is basically this is what Wyatt said in a nutshell. Sam Ellinger is either going to be good, or he's not going to be good. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Thank you. <laughs> this is great, but, great but expert he, analysis. But, <laughs> but he, but he did kind of say, he, like you know, he will not be a career. Backup like Colt McCoy. Yeah, that, that's that, yes, like that's what teams. I'm trying to get. At. He's not going to yeah. be like a Fitzpatrick, who a guy who has you know had a couple of starting jobs here and there, or uh, you know, or, and a guy who's in and out of leagues, or a guy who's good for a couple of years and then disappears. You know, he is either going to be a household name for the next 20 years, or you will never hear his name again. That's what I'm saying. He's either going to have a great career or no career. Like there's no good involved. There's no average. There's no slightly below average. It is either going to be the worst career or a great career. That's an interesting take. That's, that's what so, I'm trying to say. I'm, uh, so speaking of interesting takes here, back less why less flashback to 2005. I believe you're about three or four years old, right? Three. Uh, your Aaron Rodgers fell down to the 25th pick overall in that draft. You know, just kept falling and falling and, and like and falling. So, who is a player this year that's just going to keep falling and falling and, and falling in, in this year's draft? Oh, um, that's a good question. And, and I think that, you know, going with the quarterback theme of Aaron Rodgers here, I think it's one of the quarterbacks. I think it's one of the five quarterbacks that are so heavily sought after right now. I think we definitely have. One of those great five quarterbacks will slip out of the top 10. I don't think they'll get to the 20s where Aaron was, but I mean, if it had to be somebody, I think it's Justin Fields because it's either, well, hold on, let me, let me say this. It's either Justin Fields or it's, um, or it's Trey Lance because starting with Trey Lance here, there's so many questions about Trey Lance. You know, the film looks great. The, uh, the, con- not a combine, the pro day looked great. But at the end of the day, he's playing against FCS talent. He's not playing against Power 5 guys. So 
that's the question really that everybody's throwing up about about uh, Lance. We know the kid can play football, but can he play it at the high level? He's great whenever he's playing Delaware State. But is he going to be great whenever he plays the Dallas Cowboys or you know the Chicago Bears, the Green Bay Packers? That's the big question with Trey Lance. Let's now, when we question, look at though, how much NFL talent was on that North dude North Dakota State team, maybe him and maybe one other player. How many talent was? Uh, how much NFL talent was on that Delaware State State team? <laughs> Zero. How much talent is going to be on his NFL team? All NFL players. Exactly. How much so, is going to be on his on his de- on the defense? All NFL players. So it evens right. itself out. Yeah. So so therefore that th- I got to kind of debunk that competition thing j- j- just because like you are playing the players that you play I mean like you all have an even playing field. I mean it is not like you're with like Alabama and you have thirteen NFL players like on your team versus one, right? So, yeah. And yeah. then and then the other quarterback uh, is Justin Fields. You know, Justin's a guy who had a great pro day. He stumbled and still ran a sub four five forty. He ran a four four four, and like I said, and stumbled on the first step. Um, he's a guy who went and competed at the highest of levels. He showed that he could do it against incredible defenses. Uh, you know, he even in the national championship game, he they didn't come away with the result they wanted. But Justin played very well in that game. He also smothered Clemson, played incredibly well in that game uh, as well on on hurt ribs as well on his throwing side. So he's shown the toughness as well and the leadership capabilities to be able to push through in those tough situations. But the biggest thing is something that we just saw recently with Justin Fields, and I think it will be the reason why he'll fall, the epilepsy. That is such a scary word for a football player. Um, you know. And, and, and I know if it was going to be an issue, we would have already seen something by now. I totally agree with that. I 100% agree with that. But once again, epilepsy ties into seizures. That's a scary thing. If you get hit one good time... You could trigger something like that and end a career. I mean, it, it, it could potentially be something that's incredibly devastating down the road. So that is going to be the major turnoff we'll see these NFL teams give toward Justin. And I think if Justin falls, that will be the reason why. So, Combs, let me ask you this question here. What phrase scares you more, epilepsy or a tight end from Florida? <laughs> Well, it depends. Like, what do you mean by scares me? <laughs> <laughs> like, al- like stuck in a dark alleyway scares me, or uh, yeah, exactly. you know, I don't want my quarterback hurt scares me. <laughs> yeah. So, Holmes, who is your player that is falling down the falling down that board? I look. I've got. A, I'm going to go with quarterback too, but I'm going with a, a different quarterback that nobody's really mentioning anymore, and that's Kyle Trask. Kyle Trask, when they first started doing these mock drafts, was projected to go you know late first round. Why now he's expected to go round, right? middle third round or, or, or early fourth. So it's you know he's really fallen off. I don't know why. I like Kyle Trask. I think Kyle Trask is going to be a decent quarterback in this league. I I don't understand why he's fallen so far, but you know they're seeing something that we're not like like normal. Uh, you know I never really understand what the scouts really seeing any of these guys because i mean the scouts that said that mitch trubisky was the guy over you know deshaun watson those guys ought to be canned for life and never be allowed to talk football ever again in their entire life you know and then there, you, you also look but it's not just baseball though you look at other at scouts or i'm sorry football you look at scouts in other sports you know who was the guy who said hey let's uh let's not take this michael jordan guy let's go with sam Bowie." Like, <laughs> you know, so scouts are not always, always perfect. They're not always right. And, and, you know, they get stuff wrong actually a lot. They're a lot like the weathermen of sports. Uh, they're, they're allowed to be wrong all the time and still have a job. So right. I don't understand why he's fallen so far, but Kyle Trask is my guy who has fallen so far in this draft. It, it's ridiculous. So my guy that is falling big in this draft, I'm going to stick with Alabama wide receiver Devontae Smith. Because yes. I think I think Devontae Smith is kind of a one-trick pony in the NFL. He is going to play that slot receiver, and he's going to run some slants and maybe some and maybe some like digs. But he is not going to be your X receiver 
running a 20-yard hitch on third down to get you a first down. He is just not that guy. Well, he's like six foot tall, 160-some 60 some pounds. Yes, he was fast. pretty light. Yes, yes, he had a great college career. There are many receivers that had great college college careers just because when you're faster than everybody else, you, you can simply run down the field and let Mac Jones throw you a 40-yard bomb, right? In the NFL, it doesn't work like that. The, I see, because many people, like why you had – Devontae Smith going like fifth or sixth overall, right? Third, third to third the uh, to the Miami Dolphins whenever they were sitting at three. It would yeah. not surprise me if Devontae Smith fell out of the first round, guys. Just to be flat uh, honest, yeah. it would not. If be Dev- so- hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm telling you right now, if Devonta Smith gets to that 29th overall pick and Green Bay does not select Devonta Smith, I will be quitting life. I will legitimately hey, hey, hang on. I, pause. Be quitting I, life. Why? Pause. Pause. Didn't you just say that the that you have the best receiving core out there? You I did uh, not say we have the be- Colm, I said we have the best me. wide receiver in the league. Yes. And what about your number two? You said he would be a, be a number one in on any other team. I, I, right? be- I believe the I believe the yeah. word was yes. great. He great. is a great wide receiver. Two great option. wide receiver. But yeah. Devonta Smith's speed would be awesome to add to the team. I would love to have Devonta Smith as a returner um, to throw in there as a slot receiver. To you know, so you are going to waste your 29th overall pick for a punt returner? Are you the Chicago I, Bears? Hey, hey, I did not hey, just hey, say hey, for hey, a punt. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, you Devin did. You Hester. said a returner. Devin that's Hester. true, Devin Hester. Great. He's the GOAT of returning. He was not a receiver. He was a defensive back, though, that, that transitioned over to receiver because the, because the Bears' team core was so bad that they needed Well, he, he was drafted because of his ability to run the ball back. He was drafted as a special teams guy, and he was drafted high as a special teams guy. And no, I would not just draft Devonta Smith for his returning abilities. That is just something that comes with it. That would be something that's a little nice thing to have. Yeah. No, I would like to have Devonta Smith for his speed out on the outside, where you know he can run that streak and you can get it over the top to him. You know, essentially, kind of like a Tyree Kill. Of course, he's not a Ty- he's not Tyree Kill, but something like that. You could stick him in the slot, have him run drags, slants. Um, when in doubt, run the out, baby. Run that out route. Get it to him. So you put that speed on the outside. We all saw what he did uh, against Ohio State in the national championship what game. He, he tore them three he touchdowns ran, in the first he, half. He, he, he tore them up. He just ran past them. He just ran a fly past exactly. them. Exactly. He's not he used, their, that in the he NFL. used his speed. He's not he, do that in the he NFL. will find ways to do that in the NFL. His game will translate, especially if he comes to Green Bay. I would take – if we have the 29th overall pick and Devonta Smith is there, I would love – to have Devonta Smith on my team. I hope you guys Love. trade up to number 12, trade with the Eagles, you draft him, and I hope he stubs his toe on a couch and he is a complete bust because all he is going to be able to do is play the slot and run a five-yard slant. He That's fine with me if it gets to, us to a Super Bowl. But, 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 I'm so but tired of losing won't. the game before. Let, let me ask you guys this question. Tom Brady was picked at what overall? 199. 199. Okay. I said Kyle Trask is going to fall to the to the late third, early fourth. Don't give that. Don't. don't the New England yourself. Patriots have the 199th overall pick again. Don't, don't oh do my yourself. God! Stop don't do that it! To yourself, Combs. Don't I'm do saying, this. Would it be scary if they took Kyle Trask? No, because the Patriots no. are going to move up in the draft. They have six <laughs> picks in the first four. The rounds. Patriots. No, the Patriots are getting a quarterback on night one, whether if it is via a trade or whether if it is via a draft pick or a trade to a draft pick. They've got a quarterback. The, they got Cam I, Newton. I, I, no, they don't. They, Cam Newton is somebody that is an awesome they don't guy have to Cam fill Newton? in. Yes, they do have Clint. They, Cam well, they Newton. have Cam Newton, but he's not the future of this team. They've got Jared Stidham too. Oh, I, I think they should have given Stidham. He is the president, and I think Cam Newton's still a good quarterback given the opportunity. More picks you and are, touchdowns are last year by you have far. Not watched football in like two years. If you think Cam Newton is still good, you haven't watched <laughs> football since 2015. <laughs> Combs, me and you both sat here on the man man hour through first four weeks of the NFL season, and we were blown away by Cam Newton. We, we were blown him. away by the way the Patriots were better than we thought that they were, but then Cam and Newton Cam became Newton. Cam Newton and. Did what Cam Newton's been doing? Cam, over the no, last the four Patriots. Years. The Patriots had an incredible start when they almost beat yeah. Seattle, uh, and Cam Newton ran it and got just short of the goal line. Dude, the Patriots looked incredible. But here's the deal: the reason why they looked incredible was because here, you ready for this? What was the Patriots' scheme 
for 20 years. It was the dink and dunk game with a white quarterback who couldn't run to save his life, okay, but is the GOAT. And then you bring in possibly the most mobile quarterback of all time, at least top five in that category, whoa, and, and, whoa, and you change the whoa, entire offense. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? What? The most there mobile quarterback f- of all time? Top there five. Hello, Michael top Vick. Five. Top five. Top five. Well, I, I bet you there's, no, there's I five top white five. quarterbacks more, more mobile than Cam Newton. Michael Vick. Where is Michael Vick, <laughs> Lamar Jackson. Uh, Correct. I'll give you um, Randall Cunningham. I, 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 Randall, yeah, Cunningham. Randall Cunningham, yep. Yep. Warren Moon. No, nope. I'll give you Cam Newton's 2015 year. They went 15 and one. He was absolutely incredible that MVP year. Absolutely incredible. Tore the league up. Teddy Bridgewater right, he before he got hurt with the Minnesota oh, Vikings. Stop was it! More stop it! Stop about, it! Cam Newton is Mr. a freaking Powell running himself. back with an arm. How about Josh Allen? No, not yet. Not yet. What? Josh, what's she? What's he done? Has he been to a Super Bowl yet? Has he went 15-1 yet? Has he won an MVP yet? None of those. Cam's done all of those. I'm talking about being Has more mobile. Lamar Jackson? I, mean, you, I like, would much rather try to tackle Cam Newton than tackle Josh Allen. They would both run us over. They would steamroll all of us. Like it, They're both... 2015 Cam Newton is definitely a better runner than Josh Allen right now. I don't know I don't know about you, but I, Buck, was a, Buck was a beast. Buck, Buck would... I mean, Buck Nasty would take down Cam Newton, I think. Yep, Buck would, Nasty would, would, but hey, you got to think. Buck's had two kids now. Him. He's sporting that dad bod now. Okay, Buck's n- Buck's not what he once was. All right, Buck, Buck is Nasty still beautiful. Would scare Cam Newton because he would tackle Cam Newton and then be like, "What are you doing in the shower later?" <laughs> <laughs> so before we go to break, guys, you want to hear a great story about college ball? I would oh, love God. to. So back in my day, hazing was still like a thing, right? So I transferred into K State my sophomore year. And their hazing was to tie us up in the shower and shave our butts and call and call us gay. Um, so, yeah, uh, yeah. And I would look at them and like, uh, and I'm like, well, you you guys shaved my butt. Like, how am I gay? But <laughs> so it was kind of a ha ha. And canceled. That's, that's, <laughs> that's it. It's and been I, great, and, boys. <laughs> and funny thing is like i can edit stuff out so nonetheless guys we are going to take a quick little break we are going to uh step back from the nfl draft a little bit here we're going to step back into major league baseball and combs is going to give us some teams and players that is who is hot and who is not so major league baseball who's hot who's not coming up here on the man hour guys so stay tuned sit back relax enjoy the ride we'll be right back
And welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckeyes along with Brandon Combs and the Wyatt Williams. If you guys have missed any part of the show whatsoever, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, and of course, iHeartRadio. And now, Amazon Music, because I know we got some Amazon people out there as well. But if you want, just want to listen to the clips, you can check that out on YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour and check out the clips section as well. So click on the homepage, click on the playlist, and it has all the clips from all the shows on there, uploaded the next day up there on YouTube. So let's go ahead and welcome the boys back on the show, Brandon Combs and Wyatt Williams. You guys can all find us on Twitter, manhour underscore Combs, manhour underscore TWW, and of course you can find me at manhour underscore Buck. So guys, I got, I actually got a new follower on Twitter last night. Old Stacy gave me an old follower oh, yeah. on, 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 on Twitter. I was I was really excited. Like, girl? Yeah, I was like, Stacy's on Twitter. Woo-hoo. No. I heard her mom's got it going on. Dude, I was about to say that. I swear to God, I was about to say that. <laughs> Why you don't God. need to swear to me all the time? So just sometimes, just 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 say thanks. <laughs> but <laughs> but Combs, Major League Baseball season is starting to heat up. There are there are some hot players. There are some hot teams, but there's also some cold players and cold cold teams as well. Cincinnati Reds. So let's go ahead and start it off, Combs. Who is hot in Major League Baseball right now? Well, I mean, I, I think the obvious answer here uh, out of the, the three names I'm going to rattle off here are the Oakland A's. I mean, they started the season at 1-7, and seven, and they're now 14-9. and nine. So they've won 13 out of their last 15. They went on a 13-game win streak. So that, this team is, is absolutely phenomenal, and the Oakland A's are – Every bit what I said that they were ahead of the season, which is that team that you just keep waiting for them to stop winning games, and they just always seem to find a way to keep winning games. Yeah, I mean, like the like the uh, what the A started start off what one and one and seven, and they rattled off like thirteen, fourteen wins in a row. I mean, that is absolutely crazy to yeah. me, Combs. But looking at their schedule moving forward here, do you think they're going to cool off? Um. I don't know. Again, this is that team that you always wait for them to not be as good as they are, and they just always find a way to be. So as much as you would like to think that they would cool off, I thought when they started 1-7, I was like, oh, all right, finally we're going to see the, the A's have a, a down year. And now here we are looking at them in first place in the West while everybody else, the Astros and the Angels, are having a tough time winning ball games. Well, just 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 on the flip side of that coin, they did start the season playing off against the Houston Astros and the Dodgers. So, like, it necessarily wasn't the easiest slate of slate of games here. And then their schedule got somewhat easier with, with like playing the Diamondbacks, Tigers, the Twins, and then the O's. But now they're playing a set with the with the uh, Tampa Bay Rays starting tonight. It's actually a four game set, a Monday through Thursday set. So. Do you see them splitting them, sweeping the sweeping the Rays, or like what do you see happening? No, I don't see them sweeping the Rays. Um, I I see that you know the they maybe take two out of three, or maybe they lose two out of three. The Rays are a very good team. I mean, granted they're eleven and eleven right now, but they are a a tough team to beat, uh, especially in the dome. So. Right. I, I, I think that you know it, it's one of those. It, I always hate when a when a team from the West Coast has to go to the East Coast and play as well because it's it's just different. It, it's same thing with the East Coast team going to the West Coast. It's just it's different times. It's a different. It, it just messes with your body. So I you know I could I could see them going and getting swept. I could see them going and losing two out of three. But I could you never count this team out. That's why this team is so hard to read. Right, and I definitely think it's harder going from east to west because that ten ten first pitch for like an East Coast team, like when they're playing like like a, like a West Coast team, that is tough. So yeah. who who else is is like is like hot right now? And I was gonna go with Fernando Tatis here, but as I'm sitting here watching the game, Nico Horner, man, look, this kid got held down from be, coming up into the majors because of, of time and service issues, and then because of injury issues, the Cubs had to bring him up. And Nico Horner is just lighting it up, and he continues to stay hot tonight. He's two for two again tonight, and he is just hitting the ball. And I said that. I said once Nico Horner got in this Cubs lineup, they were going to be a different look. And this Cubs offense has looked a lot better since uh, Nico Horner has gotten in there. It's his uh, third game or uh, fifth game back. He's already got four doubles. 
So he he's just he's red hot right now. Uh, Nico Horner's there, and, and I'll put him there with Fernando Tatis too. He's got five home runs in his last three games. Uh, yeah. Just helped the Padres take three out of four from the Dodgers. So, so let me ask you this question: Do you think a player coming up from the minors, you know, like, like they're like they basically aren't in the major because the whole time is service thing? Which later in the shop talk, you will a, like you have to explain what the time of service is for these newer baseball fans here, like on the show. Do you think that makes a player more hungry and more like, like will like, like they like will themselves to perform? No, because look, Nico Horner was good last season uh, in the short amount of time that he played up in the majors, and then he was he was red. He was their best hitter all spring long, and so I, I just think the kid's the real deal. I think Nico Horner is a beast at second base. I think he's got a chance and as much as, you know, I, I love my boy Ryan Sandberg, I think he's got a chance to if he stays with the Cubs his entire career to be the best second baseman the Cubs have ever had. So do you have a uh, a a a a last who's hot or do, or did you Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you happy here. It's the oh, Kansas yeah. City Royals. Hell yeah, brother. 7 and 3 in their last 10. Oh, They're 14 and 7 on the season. They just swept the Detroit Tigers and they've won 5 straight. This team looks good, and they look a lot better than than what I thought that they would this early in the season. Now, granted, I am one of the few that picked them to have a better season than a lot of other people were picking them to have. I, I had them at 500. I had them finishing third in this division, and they are just they are red hot right now. And the the White Sox are playing good baseball right now, but the the Royals are keeping pace with them. The Royals have won five straight. The White Sox have won four straight. So the White Sox are winning baseball right now, too, but they just can't gain any ground on the Royals. Yeah, uh, one of the biggest things, so we actually had Hoffy on last night, and he said the Royals are going to come back down to earth here eventually. But looking at their schedule moving forward, it's a damn easy schedule. They play the Pirates, they play the Twins, and then again, and then they play the Indians. I can yeah. see the Royals winning 14, 15 games in a row, but then... Well. What always hurts the Royals is those fourteen, fifteen losses in a row too. Now, so, now don't don't get it twisted with what the what the uh, Oakland A's just did. The Oakland A's just won thirteen straight, but that's the longest win streak <laughs> I think in like twelve years since the last time I think it was the Rockies who rattled off like something crazy like twenty two straight at one season. Well, um, like it, 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 but, and isn't the record like twenty four because they they, cause they they were racing. Yeah, they were trying year, right? to get. Yeah, exactly. So thirteen games is a lot of games to win in a row. Can you? It. it you know, I. I would take it easy there and say, hey, maybe they can win ten out of their next fifteen, something like that. I think is a little bit more feasible for them, which still could give gain them ground in the division because if you're doing that, you're beating division opponents. You're you're yep. doing it against the teams that you need to beat, and ten out of fifteen is a is a nice stretch in that division. And that puts you really ahead of the game. I mean, what's it there? So that right now they're fourteen and seven. Right. If they go ten and five over their next fifteen, they're sitting at twenty four and twelve. Right. Well, so they're sitting pretty well above five 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 hundred. Absolutely. Here. And 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 like one of the biggest reasons why the Royals are are doing so well right now is their young pitching staff is coming of of age yeah. really quick. They uh, I agree so, with Hoffy though. I, I yeah. do think they come back down to earth. There's always that 100%. team that does good until like June, and then they find their way to fall back and they finish third or, or fourth in the division. I, I think the Royals, I think maybe they're better than we thought they were. I think maybe that they, they end up, you know, maybe they can compete for second in this division, maybe even a wild card spot. I really do like what the Royals are doing over there. I just... It's going to be interesting to see how they handle it, uh, you know, throughout the course of the season, as opposed to just the first, you know, four weeks or so. Let me ask you this question: because you said the Royals are basically basically going to be that team that basically runs out of gas throughout the dog days of summer. Is there another team that 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 comes to mind that could do possibly the same, i.e., Milwaukee Brewers? Um. Well. See the the thing about the Brewers is that they play in a really bad division. The Brewers haven't been great. What are they? Eleven and ten. But I mean, they're still they, second place in, in the division. Yeah, but they they and just haven't six been and nine, six and three versus the Cubs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and the Cubs have been horrible in this first month of the season, and yet they still find themselves only two games out of the division. Right. So, I you know I I just I don't know I think that. I, I don't know that the Brewers are going to come back down to earth because I think that are okay. So they're thirteen and eight. 
I don't think that the Brewers are going to come back down to earth uh, just because of the division that they play in. I think they're going to do a good job of taking advantage of some really porous talent. The, the, the once the Reds come back and win, look, the Reds in the matter of a week went from first to worst. Yeah. So, so I, speaking of that, who is cold? Yeah. So who is cold? I've uh, you know I got the Reds two and eight in their last ten, uh, first to worst in one week, two and seven on the road this season. They are not good away from Cincinnati, and they've had you know they had a good start to the season, but they we knew and I said it too, and I and I and I'm sorry, Stacey, because I I know you're a Reds fan, and even though they're in the same division as the Cubs, I always, you know, I, I hope my friends who whose teams they have, I hope that they could do well, unless you're a Cardinals fan, because I don't like the front <laughs> Car- Cardinals fans. But I will always, you know, hope that your team does well, because mm. the Reds fans deserve to have a winning season. Reds fans deserve to have, you know, a... a Reds fans deserve to have a good team, and they just do don't. Do they, though? Do they? They tried they to buy a world championship just a couple years ago. Like, 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 like. Yeah, like, well, and, like and they, they got rid of. And, and like everybody else, they, they well, tried and they to got, buy that championship. Stacey, well, they can't, they can't to be too great. About them. I'm telling you, you deserve a good team. You deserve. <clears throat> they're just not no. good. No, they it's don't deserve not. anything. You know why they don't deserve anything? Because they got rid of the greatest pitcher of all time, Trevor oh, freaking it. Bauer. That's You're why. That's why they you don't. They, never, they will like, never. Every time that's we do why a baseball they suck. segment, that's every why time they we suck. do a baseball segment, you should like go on break for fifteen minutes. <laughs> no, that's. I'm serious. That's why the Reds <laughs> suck. I'm serious. The so the Reds suck. They got, they got rid of the greatest like, pitcher of all time. You don't talk when we're talking baseball unless you want to say something about hey, Trevor Bauer because listen, you know it rubs me the wrong way. Undefeated as a Dodger oh so God. far has not lost a single game. He's undefeated on the best team in baseball. Hey, try being Jacob Degrom. They're the second best team per Hoffy. That's true as well, and he he would be undefeated if he was Wait, on the Mets he had as well. Them at two in the power rankings, he did. What? Yep. Yeah, Who he had is? the A's, so he had the A's at one. one. No, A's were one. He had the A's at one. Yeah, I believe he had the Padres sitting at oh, number Hoffie. five. If I'm not mistaken, stake, stake in. But oh man, am I so, sad that I missed last night, man? So, uh, <laughs> so speaking of the uh-huh. Reds, Combs, you just said it is hard from a team to go coast to coast, switch three time zones. And that's exactly what the Reds do. They go to L.A., play the Dodgers, yeah. and they have a Monday night game that starts at 10-10 East Coast time. So they're going to be playing until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning here on the East like, like on, yeah. on the East Coast. It, it, and then they played tough... a day game like the next day. So Yeah, it's going to be tough for them. They've got a tough schedule. It's going to be they're, – and they're not very – they're just not very deep right now. Yeah. The, the, the pitching staff is not very good. The other team that I got that's not hot is the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. As sad as it is to say, this is my World Series winner. They are three and seven in their last ten after starting Combs. the season at seven and three. So they're sitting at ten and ten, and they just have not been good as of late. They just dropped uh, two out of three to the Houston Astros, which leads me to my last team that's not hot is the Houston Astros. Even though they took out two out of three from the Angels this weekend, they're four and six in their last ten. Uh, and before this weekend series with the Angels, they took two out of three. They had lost nine out of, out of ten. So they are not hot right now. They're playing a little bit better over the weekend, but they're also playing against a team that is, is struggling right now. So I, those are my three teams that are not hot. So you had two teams from the AL West and you're not hot list. Has the AL West kind of uh, taken a back seat and like not going to be the best division in baseball like you once thought? No, I well, I always thought it was going to be the NL East. I, oh, sorry, I think yeah, that I the no. the AL West is is still going to be very good. It's going to be very competitive. It's going to be interesting to watch because in order for some of these teams, like the Houston Astros and the Los Angeles Angels, uh, to come back and win this division, they're they're going to have to climb back into it and, and and beat Oakland. And Oakland's just not one of those teams that's willing to lose to these teams as of the last few years. So. <laughs> I, it, it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be interesting to watch. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm I'm going to you know you know me. I, I watch baseball all the time. So right. So I would be interested to ask Tim. You know, like, do you think teams get more amped up for division opponents than like other opponents? Well, see, and that's where. So. I, I know Tim uh, Dillard, when we had him on, he said, you know, there were days where he'd go to the ballpark and didn't even know who he was playing. But, right. I mean, that could only happen maybe 82 times a year. 
because the rest of the times you're traveling and you know what city you're in, I would hope. So you got to know who you're playing. And and so I I don't know if you get more amped up for rivalry games, so to speak. I think you get ramped up for games that that mean something. So, So divisional games. Right. Divisional games early in the season and later in the season, it's just, you know, how where do you sit in the standings? How do you, you know, what do you need to do to get to here or get to there or do right. do whatever it takes? I I just think, you know, and then you've always got your rivalries. So you look at teams like the um, like the the Braves and when they take on teams like the, like the Dodgers, they, they can't stand the Dodgers. And that always seems to be a good rivalry. It's the same thing with the um, the Cubs and the Braves as well. They've got a good rivalry as well because they're both young, scrappy teams that are both flamboyant and, 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 both and love to show their flair. They're battling for the worst team in, the, in Major League Baseball. So yeah. with that being said, guys, we are going to take a quick little break. Let's go ahead and step back from the Major League Baseball and go into the association. After the break, we are going to talk NBA Who's hot and who's 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 not? Why it's time to shine here? So, guys, sit back and relax. As the end of the NBA playoffs are uh, just two weeks away, aren't they? Who's no, not? They're, they're, LeBron James. He's not playing. We'll be back, guys, on the Man Hour. Welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckhock along with Wyatt Williams and Brandon BC Combs. If you miss any part of the show whatsoever, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, and, of course, iHeartRadio as well. And, of course, you can find all the clips, all the segments, all the good talk over at YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour as we do upload the clips each and every day. And if you haven't so already, become a member over there on the YouTube page. See, all you do is simply click the Join page. And as little as $2.99 a month, you get access to the after show, you get behind the scenes footage, you get all access to the Man Hour, like all the Man Hour crew as well. And then there are different perks as well. For $5.99, you get a t shirt after six months of, of, of being a member, a members only t shirt, I might add. And then if you do join the $99 one, which is the best deal of all, you get access to the pre show, the behind the scenes footage, after show, and you get a hoodie. Every year you are a Man Hour member. So head over to youtube.com forward slash Man Hour. Join the membership today. So let's go ahead and welcome the boys back onto screen here at Man Hour underscore Combs, at Man Hour underscore TWW. And of course, you can find me at, at Man Hour underscore Buck. Why? We have talked Major League Baseball. We have talked draft. So let's go ahead and complete hey, the draft. Real quick, before we get to basketball. I was just looking up the numbers. The entire NL East, which I said is going to be the best division, with the exception of the Miami Marlins, has been outscored. 
their run differential is in the negative, with the exception of the Marlins, who is a plus one. And if the Marlins lose to the Brewers tonight, that will make more teams in Major League Baseball have been outscored than teams that have outscored their opponent. That's a crazy statistic, if you think about it. That's pretty bad. You want to know what else is crazy? Lakers are winning the champ, 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 championship. Why? Who's hot in the NBA? I hope oh, yeah. LeBron breaks his leg. Who's ouch? Who is hot? Uh, we got three teams. Who's not? We got three teams. Starting that off uh, is going to be the Los Angeles Clippers. Nine and one out of their last ten. Only one loss. And uh, current third seed in the West, which is an incredibly hard thing to do. And as of right now, while LeBron James is not playing, they're the best team in L.A. in their own facility. But once he comes back, don't worry. You know, the Lakers will be the best team again. Uh, but really, ever since Kawhi's came back, this team has been clicking on all cylinders. You know, we saw him come back about a week ago um, and make a huge impact right off the bat. Uh, they had that big win whenever he was out there. He led the team in every single statistic except for scoring. Uh, which is outrageous. So Kawhi is just a different animal. Uh, he is an incredible basketball player, and he has turned this team around. So uh, the Clippers getting back on track at the perfect time. They've jumped themselves up to the three seed uh, with their most recent um, success, of course. They are sitting at 43-19, and 19 and uh, just two games behind first place in the West. So if they continue this up, and speaking of the two teams ahead of them, the Jazz and the Suns are on a six and four um, streak over their last ten, so they have been playing better basketball than those two. So that is a big thing there for them. The Clippers are my first who's hot team. So you are telling me that if you get a top five player back on your team, you are a hot team. And e- imagine that, Wyatt. I mean, yeah. I mean, c- come on, man. But but. The but the Clippers are clicking. They they only have three losses since middle of middle of March. So they they yeah. played what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty games and three three losses. So they're so they're seventeen and three. and three in their last twenty. Wow, yeah. that's pretty yeah, impressive. So. And it really is Paul George has pretty much led scoring the whole way. So, yeah, with Kawhi out, he's really picked it up. But uh, with that being said, our second who's hot team is going to be the Washington Wizards at 9-1 and one out of their last 10 as well. And they are the 10th seed in the East at the moment. They've worked themselves back into playoff contention, uh, sitting with a 27-33 and 33 record, 13 and a half games behind first place. They're not going to get to first place, of course, but... At this rate, if they continue what they're doing, they could get themselves back into this. Russell Westbrook has returned to MVP form. Russell Westbrook is playing legitimately out of his mind right now. He is averaging like a triple-double, I believe, or right under a triple-double. Um, you know, like I said, just right back to the MVP form that we saw Russ a couple of years ago, too, as well as Brad Beal is playing very well. Um, just really that whole team right now is clicking on all cylinders. Welcome to the NBA, where even if you're a losing team, we'll let you into the playoffs. That's true, actually. God. It's not bad. Uh, oh, but uh, did did the NFL let a losing team into their playoffs last year? Oh, they did. Oh, that's a good point. Come on, Combs. Come on, man. Plus, I'm sure there's losing teams that make it in baseball, right? All the time. No. All the time. Not all the time. <laughs> there is, all the time. Last year, it happened because of the shortened 60-game season, and uh, I believe that the Astros got in one game under 500, but it's never happened in the 162-game season. Wow, I didn't even know that. But who else, uh, is hot, uh, who else is hot? Our final who's hot team. Who else other than the New York Knicks? Also nine and one. Everybody on the who's hot list today uh, is nine and one out of their last ten. Only one loss. Uh, the current fourth seed in the East. They are seven games behind first place. Uh, the Nets, of course, own that first place trophy right now. But. Uh, Man, I mean, this has just been the Knicks' season. They have really just come full circle. Julius Randle is playing incredibly right now. Just, you know, we've never seen this from him before until, you know, this year. He really just kind of snapped, and now he's playing incredibly. Uh, RJ is playing very well. Really, that whole team is just clicking on all cylinders, and I love the confidence that they play with. You know, um, they, they, the reporter asked uh, Julius Randle, I believe it was, a couple of weeks ago, whenever they were squaring off against the Nets, 
he said, uh, wh- how are you going to prepare for the Nets' big three? And he said, we're not, because we've got a big five. So, you know, they've got confidence in themselves. They've got confidence in their team. And, man, they're playing like it as well. So they are currently 9-1 and one, uh, out of their last 10, 34-27 and 27 on the year in the fourth seed in the East. And they are three games behind the Bucks, who sit at the three seed. Um, as well as five games behind the second place 76ers and uh, seven games behind the first place Nets. So that so, is our who's hot teams. So not only are the Knicks nine and one, they have won nine straight. So let's yes. just, so so I, let's just go ahead and throw that out there. They have won nine straight. Yes. But some of the biggest news that has been surrounding the Knicks organization is the fact that Zion said he would love to play at Madison Square Garden all the time. So, I mean, could they even have a big six coming to New York here eventually? That is a big question here. But yeah. you, but you, but you mentioned that the that the Knicks are just five and a half games at a second place. I think they might want to pump the brakes a little bit and stay in that third seed, just because like I think the one and two seeds are going to get upset this year. So they they don't want to be that one or two seed just because there's there there are going to be teams jumping into the playoffs that that already have a couple games under the, under their belt and they got the flow of the playoffs and the must win situations. You want to be their three that you're playing a a team wet behind the ears in the playoffs still too, right? Yeah. Great, great commentary. <laughs> Answering your question. What, what do you expect from him? Who is cold white in the NBA? Oh, God. Here we go. Um, <laughs> so first off, I hate to do this to you, old uh, BC man, but I got to do it. Uh, that's going to be the Bulls, okay? They are 25 and 35. Three and seven in their last ten, and, and they still are have a shot to make the playoffs. The exactly, they are the eleventh <laughs> seed, and they they are the eleventh seed, and uh, they are just two games behind the tenth seeded Wizards. So um, they've still got time to get this in check, but they've got to get this cold streak over with if they're going to make it. No, uh, into, don't into make that the play playoffs. In. Don't don't make the play. Why would you want to see this horrible team make the playoffs? They are twenty five and thirty five. They are ten games under five hundred. Why would you want to see this horrible team? They're going to go to the playoffs and do what? Are they going to compete? Are they going to go ahead and take out the number one seed in the first round? No. It, it doesn't matter who that eight seed is. Uh, the Nets are going to stomp them and sweep them. Yeah, not, there's Nets, there's Nets no, overrated. like, so so don't, why, like, no, they're, don't go to the they're, playoffs. Buck, they're the don't one suck. seed right now in the East, and yeah. their big three has only played together like six times this year. Exactly. They're still you know the one why seed. They're overrated? Because their big three has only played six games together, and you have to have camaraderie, you have to have <laughs> chemistry on the court to win a series. Yes, you can win a few games here, here or there with the quote big three, but to win a series, come on, man, you have to know how he, how each other plays. You like you have, like like you have to know who is going to take the big shot. But let's go ahead and trans- transition back to the Bulls here. Looking at their schedule <laughs> moving forward. Their schedule does not get any easier. Like either they play the Heat at Heat, and they play your hot team. The New York Knicks, they play a very good Bucks team that throttled the set at the 76ers just a couple of days ago, and they have a very underrated Atlanta Hawks team too. So it doesn't get much easier for the Bulls at all. So who else is cold? Yeah, next on our uh, who is not is the uh, Trailblazers. Two and eight out of their last ten. Uh, the current seventh seed in the West. And uh, once again, another team just like the Bulls, who they're sitting at 32 and 28. They're a seventh seed. They're right on the edge of, you know, they're still in that play in tournament. They're still in that bubble situation. Um, and still have plenty of time left. They're only one game behind Dallas. Uh, they're only three games behind the Lakers sitting at that fifth seed. So, you know, uh, they're 12 seed. They're 12 games behind first place. Of course, they're not going to make first place, but they've still got plenty of time to scooch their way up and guarantee themselves a playoff spot. And with Damian Lillard, what we saw, I mean, Dame time, baby. We saw what he did last year in the playoffs, just channeled everything. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen a more clutch set of games than what Damian Lillard's done in, in his playoff set last year, which was insane. I think he averaged like almost 40 points a game uh, right. for that set, which was awesome and, and very fun to watch. But, uh, you know, they've got a shot to get back to that moment. And, you know, they're currently, like I said, they're currently 2-8 and eight and in the seventh seed. And they, if they continue this up, uh, there's a lot of hungry teams like the Grizzlies, the Spurs, the Warriors, the Pelicans sitting behind them who are all good, capable teams. 
uh, who would love to take their spot. So if they don't get this in check and get it together soon, it's going to be bad news bears. On the flip side of the coin, though, they might be two and eight in their last ten, but they have all been really close competitive games. You know that they have a point game here. They have a they have a three point game game here. So they they remind me a lot of a NFL team and the Cleveland Browns that that like they're there, but they just can't quite get over that get over that hump. And I think they they needed to take these lumps the last basically the month of the month of April. To basically have playoff Dame back and you know kind of get that momentum going for them, so I look for the Blazers to really turn it around. Come like May second, May third time. Absolutely, and for our <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for our final who's not team, that is going to be the Philadelphia 76ers, a team that I didn't think I was going to ever mention on the who's not section after they've had the great season they have. 39 and 21. That sounds great on paper, but in their last 10 games, they've only won five, and they have currently played bad enough where they've dropped themselves out of that first seed in the East. They have completely Good. fell down, and the Nets have taken over the East now. Um, and that's that's a that's a primitive position for them. They've got to gain back because you you're not going to beat. Brooklyn at Brooklyn four times. I mean, it's just not going to happen. You're, you, you, you've got to if, if you're in a seven game series, you'll have to win three at your house and at least one at theirs. And I'm sorry, I just don't. I don't see that's going to be so difficult to go into Brooklyn and win like that. You know, I, I would. I think it would be more highly likely that Brooklyn wins four games against them at home rather than them just sneak away with one. That's a really tough place to play with those three. Um, playing there in KD and uh, Kyrie and James Harden. So the 76ers, you know, once again, in that spot where you can still, you still got plenty of time to turn it around, but uh, MVP candidate, Joel Embiid, you've got to show us that you're the MVP candidate that you are and, and, and get this back in check and get your team online. If he can manage to get himself out of this hole and get them to the one seat again, I think Joel Embiid has a really good shot of winning MVP. I still think that the Joker uh, comes away with it or Steph, I think those two are more deserving of it, but if Embiid really wants to push the envelope and get himself to that point, he's got to get that one seed in the East. Well, just to add to your point there, I mean, the 76ers have a pretty easy next five games here. I mean, they play, I mean, they do play the Hawks twice, but then they play the Spurs, Bulls, and then they Hawks to uh, round out the month of like April here. But why? correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe when a one and two team <clears throat> One seed and a two seed play in the playoffs. It, it would have to be for the championship game, right? Yes. In the conference championship chip, chip game. Yes. Okay. And the Nets won't be getting out of the second round, so the 76ers don't have to worry about the Nets at all. So who, who do you who do you think is going to beat them? Which the which team? I will name you the four through the eight. I will I'll name you the four through the ten heat, seed right now. I just told you the heat, heat. Seven seed Heat. No, I just there's no way. Why? I think I think the Heat could beat the Sixers. But I don't think they have enough firepower to keep up with the Nets. What, I really don't. What makes the Nets so good that the Heat cannot beat them? On any given night, they can put up 140 to 150 points. How? Any Kevin given Durant night. Durant is Celtics out. can beat the Nets. Kyrie Irving's out, and so is uh, uh, they. Though they Harden. will, they will all be back. The Boston Celtics could beat the Nets. Yeah, I, I think. I think what Combs just said is, in my opinion, is is possibly. Of everyone from the four seed to the ten seed, I think that the Celtics have the best shot at beating the Nets. I don't think Which they the will. Celtics are sitting at four seed, right? No, the Celtics are the six seed right now. They're thirty two okay. and twenty nine. They're on a seven and they're they're on a uh, they've got they're seven and three in their last ten. So they would play in the second round. Uh they would. Yeah. Yes, 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 they would. So therefore, the Nets will lose in the second round, like I just told you. Not to the, I, I said that is the team that could do it. I I, I do agree with Combs here. I I think the the Celtics are the team that would do it if there is a team that's going to do it. If they, but there's not. It will be Lakers and Nets. I Knicks? promise. You don't think the Knicks are good enough to beat the Nets? No, no. I think the Knicks need a little more growing uh, before they're going to be a contender. I think they're. Yeah. I think they're one piece away. And honestly, they, I think the, that the piece Nets might have, be Zion. The Nets have a big three, but they are. Three guys who have a tendency to disappear. Sure. And, no, and, absolutely. And that's why I think that I think I agree with Buck. I think they're completely beatable. I 
I think that there's more than just one team that can beat this team because of that factor that I just mentioned. They've got three guys, KD and and, and Kyrie and I mean Kyrie is showing he doesn't even to be honest with you. I question Kyrie's you know uh, his focus on the game itself. I, I question because the whole Ramadan situation. Every, every every three games yeah. he's taking a personal day. Well, did right. you guys if, see what happened? KD, the reason why he left. Not, if KD's not hurt, he's you know sitting in the back room waiting for his mom to come powder his butt or something. Yeah, because you know he's he's getting it tore up on Twitter. So <laughs> I just why I, I, I don't like I don't like what the what the Nets have. I, I think the Nets are very beatable, and I agree with Buck. I think they're the probably the most overrated team in the East. So why did Kyrie miss all those games? Yeah, he he recently converted to Islam, I believe, and and was it Ramadan or something? Jesus. That's what it was. They, they he literally came out with it like two days ago that he j- literally about, just converted to Islam how and about became you convert it, 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 to the fact that you're getting paid millions of dollars in a contract to play the game of basketball. Yeah, so they should take out yeah. at least seventy percent of his pay right since he's missed seventy percent of the games. But that's that's Kyrie's game, man. Kyrie always sits out most of the regular season. He did it while he was in Cleveland. He did it a ton while he was in Boston. When when Kyrie was in Boston, I, you know why? I, I feel like it was two out of three nights he, he LeBron, wasn't there. He had LeBron to learn from. Sheesh. LeBron, Jesus. this is the most games LeBron James has missed in all of his in, a, in his in entire career. Career, and. Wasn't Kyrie the same person that said the earth is flat? Yes, he was. Okay, I'm just making he sure so he is LeBron. not right in the head. <laughs> Kyrie well, he, Irving and Kyrie Young are going to be roommates here eventually. Kyrie Irving is a very interesting character. He he definitely is. All right, guys. We're going to take a quick little break. On the other side of the break, we're going to jump back into the NFL draft. So if you guys got some questions for the draft master himself, Wyatt Willem, because he has now taken over Todd McShay. Uh, so Wyatt is better than Todd McShay, and also 12 is greater than You nine. heard it here. So just keep that in mind. So we'll be right back here, guys, on the Man Hour. We'll be right back. To the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckley along with Brandon Combs and Wyatt Williams. If you missed any part of the show right now, head over to manhourradio.com. You can check out the podcast form there as we upload all the show and all the clips over there on the podcast form. I am a little bit behind of uh, uploading those clips just because we decided to do that just this weekend, but I, they are coming up. I promise you guys. So I'm, I'm uploading like 15 clips a day 
over there. So let's go ahead and welcome the boys back onto the screen here uh, <laughs> as Wyatt can never hold it together and always messes me up. So what's so funny over, like, like over there, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I was messing I'm like in the Wyatt. comments trying to show stuff like the the man I like hear man hour is live every you know Sunday through Thursday good info stuff and Combs keeps on coming through with this every <laughs> single time I put something up there it's like yeah. I'll put up there somebody's comment then he'll follow it with that I'll put up somebody's comment he'll put it with that absolutely it was awesome <laughs> it was funny he had me laughing Absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mess you up, Buck. Oh. So, with that being said, it's goofy guys. That is three drinks. We knew we now have a new drinking game here on the Man Hour. So every time Wyatt Williams says, "Now with that being said," and absolutely, you oh guys have God. to drink. So that was Wyatt, Stacy and, and, I feel and like, Nana's game. And I they feel are like drunk. I can't say anything now. Like if I talk about the Packers, if I say, "Okay," with that being said, like I feel like whatever I say now is just gonna is gonna. It's not gonna end up drinking. How about this? How, let's change that up a little because we would have to drink a lot if we did that. How about yeah. if you say, "With that being said," three times in the same paragraph? Yeah, that's fine. I, I don't think okay. do I say it that much? Like, is it really yeah. that bad? It oh, is, you say it uh, a lot. Oh man, it, it, it's almost as bad as me with um, because I and say it's um me a lot. with like. Yep, it, it it's almost as bad as Buck stutter. <laughs> you know it's there. All yeah. right, every time I say it now, you guys say one, okay, and then count them. Let's see how many I do, okay? No, because okay. then you'll subconsciously start to like. Like I will keep a secret a secret tally over here on the behind the scenes footage, so we have like a run okay. total. So with that so, being said, just go forth to what you're trying to say. No, I'm just kidding. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. I'm absolutely so ready to hear what you're saying, Buck. In. Let's go ahead and jump back into the NFL draft. And if you look at any mock draft across the board, Trevor Lawrence has been at the top of the list since his freshman year. Of, since of he was like, born. Uh, yeah, of like, of like Pretty college. Much. Let's just be flat out honest. And with that being said, Chris Sims comes out and basically puts Zach Wilson over Trevor Lawrence. And with, and with that being said, I am all about <laughs> click clickbait absolutely, but is Chris Sims just simply clickbaiting us uh, to like look at his article or do you really think Zach Wilson is better than Trevor Lawrence? Calm I'm going to kick it to you first. I've always said that Zach Wilson is better than Trevor Lawrence since since the we started talking about the draft. But with that being said, I just think that Trevor Lawrence is is one of those guys that's that's not very – he's just going to be a bust. And so, I mean, I guess, yeah, I would have to say with that being said that Phil Simms is definitely trying to trying to clickbait us. So, so you kind of just like – so you, you, like, you kind of just contradicted yourself there because you said that Zach Wilson is going to be better than Trevor, but – then you don't. So you think well, that he's, Chris he's Sims is saying it because to, Chris, Chris Sims is now jumping on my mind and yours bandwagon. You can't be a bandwagon jumper, Chris Sims. You can't get on this train. This is me and Buck's train, and you are not welcome, Chris Sims. I've told you this in the comments. You're a clown. <laughs> you are not welcome here. This was our take a long time ago. Get off that train. You and Wyatt Williams can go ahead and ride the Trevor Lawrence is going to be phenomenal and he's got a three <laughs> percent chance at being a bust. I never train. said that. I said twenty five percent. But on the flip side of that coin, just to add to some vali- some validity of what Combs has said, we've been saying that since what, like October Combs, like, like yeah. basically since the man hour started that Trevor Lawrence was going to be a bust in the I've been in saying the, it since the since the uh, since his junior year since or I'm sorry, his second year, his sophomore year. I said, this kid is going to get drafted. He's going to get drafted high, but he's not going to do well in the NFL. Not only because of where he's going to get drafted to, but I just, I, you have yet to see him play a great defense in the regular season. So, and then on the flip side of that, of that coin, Justin Fields was actually ranked higher coming out of high school than Trevor Lawrence. So Justin Fields was the number one overall quarterback. Trevor Lawrence was the number two. So why here's, here's a question for you, Wyatt. Yep. If Trevor Lawrence was on Ohio State this past year, does he start over over Justin Fields? Because I don't think he they, they don't want they don't want a national title. Yeah. The. That's not what I asked you. No, I'm, I'm saying yes, and they would have won a national title. Yeah. So with so with that being said, is Chris Sims just kind of trolling? 
So Chris Sims does this all the time. Chris Sims loves the hot take. And every, like, he'll say a million, and he'll get one right. Like, for example, uh, the draft class with Lamar and all of them. He said that Lamar was the best quarterback in that draft. He said it just for clickbait. He said it just for attention. He happened to just be right. And now what? he prances around. What? What? Lamar Jackson is not the best quarterback in that draft class. He has an MVP. None of the other quarterbacks have an MVP. To have an MVP, you have to be the best player in the Who league the that year. Who are the other quarterbacks in that, in that draft class? Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, and Josh Rosen. If you want to put Josh Rosen at one, we can. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Josh Allen is probably the most complete quarterback of that draft. Yeah. Definitely uh, the best. But Lamar Jackson probably has had, had the most success. He's had the most success since that draft so far, yeah. You know what? I strongly disagree with both of you because I think Baker Why? Mayfield has had the most success. How? He took has a Baker shit Mayfield team. won an he, MVP? What? 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 No, what? he hasn't. But what? he okay. took the Cleveland Browns, what? the 0-16 Cleveland Browns quarterback death graveyard and led them to the playoffs and about beat they, the Kansas City they Chiefs. They also built around him with like far okay. superior talent. Like, I, like he's... You can't he has deny. a he has I know a you don't like team Lamar around Jackson, him. You don't like ever admitting that he does anything good. But the guy won an NFL MVP. He you have to be the best really player in the league for that. Best player in the league that year. None of the other guys have that on their resume. He got it by default, just because Patrick Mahomes got hurt and they didn't want to give the oh quarterback back to back MVPs. That's the only reason. No, just just because. Think about this, guys. Here in the NFL, it is so since Patrick Mahomes threw five, five for was like fifty two hundred yards, and then he throws for fifty nine or sorry okay, forty nine hundred yards Buck. the next year and missed three games. We're like, oh, he had an off year. Re- he missed three games Buck. and still threw forty nine hundred yards. Buck. How is that not? Does he have an NFL? Whether it was gifted to him, whether or not somebody got hurt. Did he win the NFL MVP? The other guys didn't get it gifted to him. Why didn't they gift it to Why didn't he they gift have. it to Baker Mayfield? Why didn't they gift it to Josh Allen? Because they weren't as good as Lamar Jackson. So even if you want to say that he didn't win it that year, say he was the run, say he was the runner up in the NFL MVP, he was still better than the other two quarterbacks. He was better than the other two quarterbacks last season. Like I. I don't know. I, I get your hatred for for Lamar Jackson. I don't like the guy very much either. But so far to this point, I think Josh Allen will have the better career. I think Baker Mayfield will have a better career. But to this point, he's been the most successful quarterback out of that draft class. So for sure, what do you measure? What do you measure success by? Wins and wins and losses. Here we or go. Stats on the yes. Here we go. No. Playoff. No. 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 We're absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Losses. Yes. No. No. Wins and losses. He he is the most winning quarterback of that class by far. He had a thirteen three season in a, last year. What was the what was the Bills record last year? Like twelve and four. Twelve and four. Yeah, that's not Lamar's what, was thirteen and three. What? The year before. Okay, but what were this they year this they were year? eleven and five, one game behind the Bills. The Bills so, the season before were nine and seven. So Lamar Jackson has one more win than Josh Allen in the last no, two years, right? No, it last <laughs> year Lamar Jackson yeah, has one wins. less. <laughs> He's got like five more wins. Yeah, because Lamar went thirteen and three. Josh Allen went nine and seven. So basically, you are telling me that the measurement of success is a team reward, right? Not not an individual reward. Fuck this this well, no, your no, quarterback is your question. general. They got to lead you. You won an individual award. Lamar ja- already gave Lamar you an Jackson. individual award. He won the MVP. There's Lamar more Jackson was the best player the on that team. Valuable player. So you are so you are telling me right now that so since the uh, who was uh, um, how did we get from talking about the draft to talking about whether or not Lamar Jackson is the best quarterback in his draft class? <laughs> we got just derailed. let him keep like, going. I just love because it. you want to this talk is, about your hatred for Lamar. No, see, I don't hate I don't hate Lamar as a person. You fans put him up on this freaking pedestal and and the no draft I didn't night, put him up on a pedestal. Go cards, I'm just baby. Yes, you facts. are. He, draft night, Lamar no. Jackson said, "I'm Go winning cards, the Super Bowl." Like, 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 and the fans yes, are like, sir. Oh, "Oh, hail Lamar Jackson!" L one C four. The facts are, Buck. 
He's won more games than anybody else in that quarterback draft class. He's won, he's won more won awards, MVP, which nobody else has done in that draft class. Okay, he's so rushed if for you more yards that... than anybody else in that NFL draft class, he's done. He's just been, he's been more. You can't deny the fact that in his first three seasons, he has been more successful than the other quarterbacks. Josh in that Allen draft. has only had that's one good undeniable. year. Undeniable. That is undeniable, and that's false. Josh Allen had a good year last year when they were nine and seven, but he, they were just they weren't that good. <sighs> no, I I I, I was one of the first people to say that Josh Allen was great and he was going to have a pop off year this yes. year. But I can say the season before he had some inaccuracy issues. He he threw a lot of interceptions the oh, year before sure. the last. So, but Lamar Jackson does that too, though. Oh well, yeah, but let's let Lamar Jackson's not a strong arm quarterback who's supposed to throw the no, ball downfield. Ex- exactly, that's what I'm saying. It, Lam- I think that the other, I think Baker and and Josh Allen are going to have the better careers. But to this point, Buck, you ca- it's just not. If you deny it, it's just because you don't want to admit it. It's no, not the fact that it's you not guys true. Are measuring- it's, you just don't want to admit it. You guys are measuring success by team success, not individual success. How? If you want to he do won individual an MVP, uh, that's an MVP. That was, that's that was most by about, default. Buck, Buck, was, Buck is an individual person a player, right? Yes. Okay. MVP so, Buck, stands for most say, valuable right, let, let's player. Let's go by your theory, though, Buck. Let's go by your theory. So he won it by default because your boy Patty Mahomes got hurt. Okay. So even so, he was still second on that list. You know who wasn't even on that list? Baker Josh Mayfield Allen, and Josh Baker Allen. Mayfield. Well, just, Baker Mayfield was list. going. Baker Mayfield was going like eight seven and one or seven eight and one that year. But he, <sighs> Baker Mayfield, literally turned the Browns from the best team to Super Bowl I, contenders. I agree with I you. Agree with you. That's why I, so, Josh Allen. That's hold on, why hold I on. Said Josh, Josh Allen, Allen and Baker Mayfield are going to have better careers. Josh but Allen point, turned the Bills not, around. They haven't been better at this moment. No, they have not. So I'll call you guys ready for some real facts. Facts here. Let's just talk the last two seasons. Just because Lamar Jackson did did not play all of 2018, well, he came out the last eight nine games, right? So stats and tore it up. Stats. Let's just talk strictly stats. Just because team success does not equivalent to individual success here. Passing yards. Lamar Jackson 2019 had 3,127 yards passing with the 58 completion percentage here. Uh, Josh Allen, thirty two hundred yards with a sixty percent compassion rating. Who had the better so the same. season then? They're, they're they're right about even, right? Let's right look even. at let's look at last year. Who threw for forty five hundred hundred yards and who threw for twenty seven hundred yards? Josh Allen threw for forty five hundred yards, but Josh Allen also has I he's mean, a strong arm pocket passing quarterback. A, yeah, exactly, okay. and not only that, Andy, but I mean, he's and got he's got Stephon better receivers. Diggs. Yes, he's got freaking like he's got a, a much better wide receiver core than they have in Baltimore, and not to mention they had a better offensive line, a better run game, and a, and a much better defense. So, how about this? Who had a thousand yards r- r- rushing, and who had um, five hundred and twenty-one yards? Uh, Josh Allen had more rushing yards, and actually, in fun fact, in their careers, Josh Allen has five more rushing touchdowns than Lamar Jackson. That's something nobody knows. So, <clears throat> based on what you guys just just said, Josh Allen is a better quarterback stat wise. He will and be. He yes, he's going to have a better career. No, 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 this no, 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 this last year. Josh Allen was was a better quarterback statistically. The year before, he was not. And the year before yes, that, was. I would go as yes, far as say was. he was not. He had MVP. Right the MVP. Right about neck and neck. MVP. Two years ago, MVP. Josh Allen was not the MVP race. Okay. So, because you're in the MVP race, a biased voting thing makes you better automatically? Biased voting? He tore, he yes. tore the league up. Isn't, legitimately isn't MVP in the NFL up. isn't NFL MVP voted on by the players? I thought MVP in the NFL was voted on by the players. No, that's the top 100 players. I don't know how honestly how the MVP is voted to be honest with you. It's it's the board of whatever for the NFL. I'm but not I can sure. tell you it is biased. It is not bi- Well, first off, hold on. Even if it was biased, Josh Allen wasn't even in the race to, for it to be biased. They don't okay. pick a 9 and 7 quarterback Lamar to be Jackson in an MVP been candidate in the race either. He was thirteen and three. They had the best record in the he league. He threw twenty five hundred yards. How many did he run for? He broke Michael Vick's rushing yard record. Okay, is he a quarterback or is he a running back? 
He's asking he is a quarterback. A he's a quarterback with okay, a how, heck of a leg set. Asking for a friend. We've got the draft coming up in three days. Is Lamar Jackson in it? He should be. <laughs> okay, because we be just spent the last ten minutes best. talking about Lamar Jackson and debating on whether or not he's better than Josh Allen and, and Baker Mayfield. <laughs> Jeez, I'm crow. And now we got to move to shop talk. <laughs> no, no, I got, I got one more question. Since you guys want to, uh, oh uh, God, okay, here we go. Welcome back to the Man Era, guys. Michael Buckeyes along with Brandon Combs and Wyatt Williams. So I cut Wyatt off last night because last night I was in the middle of a sentence, Combs, and like a like, lot. Like, I was like, oh, oh, hold up. It's break time. Boom. Like, he asked me a question that warranted like a five-minute answer. He's like, you get three words and I'm going to go into like break. <laughs> Asshole. 100%. Hey, we oh, got to fill those ad move. slots, man. Yeah, I mean, I mean huh. if you're going to pull moves like that, if you're going to mute people or cut people off, you've actually got to show up on time to pre-show. <laughs> no, no. If you all want to talk about Actually, you got to show up on time if, to anything. If you all want to talk about muting people, okay. Let, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Great minds take a light cones. We both <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, so, so you unmuted me. <laughs> uh, so with that being said, guys, it is time for shop shop talk. This is a time where we get to interact with you guys a lot in the chat. So if you want to talk about anything in the chat, let us know. And there were some questions that were pro- proposed about a half hour ago, nine seventeen to be exact. And Stacy wants to know for shop talk. What is the true definition of the goat? The goat, they like the goat, meaning oh, the greatest God. of all time. Definitely not LeBron. So, uh, uh, Wyatt, what is your definition of my goat? my definition of goat is LeBron, and I, and and I think it. I think that the, the goat. So hang the on, goat Wyatt. has absolute. Hang, hang, hang on. When you a definition does not have a name attached to it, what is your definition of the goat? I think the definition of the goat is a true um, would be someone that's a that's a game changer, once in a generational talent, uh, once in a lifetime talent, and I think that um, the goat has to have leadership capabilities. The goat has to have winning capabilities and scoring capabilities, and um, you know playmaking so LeBron capabilities. Has one out of the last six that you've mentioned, LeBron has every single one of those that I have just mentioned. Okay, yeah. he has everything on the court. But as of late, though, why I have to agree with Combs and a lot of people in the chat, his off the court antics are kind of like dragging him down, and it's kind of, kind of clouding his um, greatness. To be honest, 
No, so I, I I do agree with everybody. I think that LeBron James sometimes can go a little too far politically and say some things that he shouldn't, and and absolutely that you know I don't agree with everything that he says. But at the end of the day, politics aren't on the court. Politics have absolutely nothing to do politics with your are basketball. All over the NBA court. Well, no, it is. All I'm just it. saying politics they're, they're has absolutely nothing to do with your basketball court. skills. <laughs> It is, yes. But I mean, what I mean by that is politics has absolutely nothing to do with how good of a basketball player you are. You could be a social rights activist. You could be a, a, a um, you know, presidential candidate. It doesn't matter. How you play on the court has nothing to do with your political views, ideas, and agendas. We've had this argument all the time. LeBron, first of all, LeBron's not even the GOAT. It's Michael Jordan. LeBron's not even the second best player of all Stop it. Anybody who knows what a basketball is knows that MJ and LeBron are one and two. That is not even debatable. I, I won't even. I, I don't even know if I can compare LeBron James to Kobe Bryant, let alone Michael Jordan. So no, I'm sorry, so, but so Combs, you are associating with names there to the goat, and you know you're you're like putting them in order. So what is your definition of of the, of of the goat? I think a goat is so hard to determine because it's so hard to to go through generation after generation and and say, oh, well, this player was better than this player because there's always that argument. Well, he didn't have to deal with this or he didn't have to deal with that or, you know, that the talent uh, of today's players is so far superior to the talent of the players before. Like, I would love to say that that Babe Ruth is is the greatest baseball player of all time, but in my mind, it's, it's Barry Bonds. And you look at, you know... Things that that have happened and things that go on. I mean, some people would consider Mike Trout to be of, among the best of the game. I don't even think Mike Trout's top ten. So there's just, I don't know. There, there are. It's going to be hard. It's always going to be an argument because to determine how a player is better from one generation to the next is so tough. But the definition of of goat to me is just a guy who you know really shines above the rest. Who who a lot like a lot of what Wyatt said. He's got to be a leader. He's got to be a guy who always shows up in, in the shining moments. Maybe not disappear in a game seven of the NBA Finals. Um, he's got. LeBron has never guy. once disappeared in any playoff series. He does for a game or two, but not the whole. He series. is never uh, LeBron's he final stats are in look are in, the, are, are uh, incredible. What his when teammates when fall apart. Huh? When play the Dallas like I, we've talked about this he, before, the LeBron Dallas Mavericks James is the one I will give you. They should have never. And no, okay, the, the whole so team just disappeared. Said never, and now you say, "Well, the Dallas Mavericks are the one that I'll give you." No, one time, it, yes, okay, one time. The, yeah, but one time is not never, is it, Wyatt? Okay, you're right. One time is not okay. never. Yes. So, all right. And, okay. You know who's never disappeared in, in an NBA final series? Michael Jordan. Do you know who's disappeared in the playoffs multiple times? You know who's had losing seasons without Scottie Pippen? Do you know who has oh God, not even been able to make it to the finals? You know how who you know who's not even been to the finals as many times as Anyway, so now that we got that out of the way. That's what I thought. So <laughs> so I, God, I hate him. So with that being said, like <laughs> Stacy basically says a like like a goat as a person that is good both on and off the court. So somebody like Tom, right? Like Tom like, Brady, M- MJ the was the greatest and- off the court. He got his dad killed because of gambling. He was such a great. Hey, 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 hey! Wow. It's true. What? Somebody's got to wow. say it. Okay, somebody's got to say it. Somebody's got to say it. All right, he got his daddy wow. killed because of gambling. Let's be real here. You don't just find somebody dead in a car in the middle of the woods while your son has millions of dollars of gambling issues. I, 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 somebody had to say it. Somebody had to say it at some point. I'm sorry. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go to the next shop talk here. I cannot scroll, 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 scroll up far enough to get that comment, but I do have it wrote down here. And Michelle come out and said, "Did you guys see that a uh, record breaking catch that Gronk did at Arizona Unit? Love Gronk. Firstly, he he basically caught a a six hundred uh, yard pass. Like he he so they they basically dropped a ball from a helicopter and and he." Caught it, which broke a world record. But uh, but uh, but like I but I I want to do one better. Did you guys mean uh, why your your favorite show is Peyton's Places? 
Did you see that uh, pass where he threw it off of a skyscraper into yes. like a lawn and like it's like episode three or, it. or whatever, and it's in right. New York. Yeah. What do you think would be harder to do? Make that catch off of a skyscraper into like a field, or a catch from a helicopter? Probably a skyscraper that situation because. Um, and I think the data will even show it too. I think in that show on Peyton's places, they missed it around 10 times, maybe 20 somewhere in there, 10 to 20 times. Gronk only took three tries. That was it. And then he caught it. So I think that that also shows part of it. Um, well, I think, I think the the skyscraper, it was a couple hundred feet, like two, 300 feet. But the thing is, whenever you throw it off the skyscraper too, you've got objects like they were in a park. There was like trees and, uh, cars and like other buildings in the way and stuff. I mean, Peyton was having to maneuver this ball literally perfectly straight down to his receiver on the ground. I mean, it had to be a perfect pass. 600 feet compared to 200 feet. Yeah, but you see, there are different aspects here. Like, they were just dropping a ball from a helicopter. Yeah, they just dropped it straight down. Peyton actually had to throw it. Yeah, so so with the skyscraper catch, there was... There was elements involved. There was Peyton. Then there was Chris. It was it was Chris Carter, right? That was catching the ball. And then I think you so. know, as and then as you throw 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 the ball, you know you had the speed of the ball coming, and then the and then the gravity. So it makes it that much faster. And just dropping straight from a helicopter, you know, like it's me. I mean, like yes, there's wind, and it's and it's going side to side because a, a football just doesn't fly straight. But I mean. I give the multiple factors more of a harder catch. That's just me. Mi- Michelle only likes it because it was Le- like it was. I was going to say LeBron James because it was uh, <laughs> Gronk. Gronk. She Gronk she loves best, Gronk. Man. She loves everything Gronk does. She she posted it on my on my Facebook page <laughs> earlier, and she just look anything Gronk. Gronk could have caught the ball from an underhand toss from three yards away and she would have posted it and been like look at this guy catch this she just likes watching <laughs> Gronk move period Why? she doesn't like, even care what is so fascinating about Gronk that makes him so like appealing he's just he's a Gronk football. he's the yeah. ultimate party boy football player yeah. um he's just he's girls Gronk just he's think just he's hot so so basically he's so super basically muscular what you're Basically, what you're saying here, why is Gronk is a frat boy, right? Yeah, but incredible so at football. Why is, why is she marrying Combs the exact opposite? <laughs> wow. No, no. That's actually a good point. Yeah. yeah that's fair. I, mean, that's fair I grew up in a college town next to an army base. Army guys and frat boys fought all the freaking time because they're battling for the same girls, you know, and that kind of thing. Who wins, Combs? Army people win all the time because frat boys get drunk and they can fight anybody. Who wins, Combs? It's, it's Who wins what? People. Me versus Gronk? No, no. Frat boys versus army army guys for getting chicks. Military people win all the time. Yes. <laughs> Wyatt, you're not very that good wasn't, at that game. game. That wasn't even know, funny. Though. I know. He just said yes. So. Wyatt, are you just mad because you can't win a fight? Are you just mad? Once I say anything, I'm gonna get muted. I, we won't mute you. No, I, I'm I don't believe you for real. Look, my hands are right here. Have you ever won hands a up, fight? Buck? Hands up, Buck. H- hands uh, S I'm doing with an the, S. The mixer. I'm doing the mixer. <laughs> what do you? You push a button and leave it. No, I have to <laughs> cue, cue it in and out. Have you ever won a fight, Wyatt? We don't care. Man, our nation, rise up. Okay, Wyatt, seriously, have you ever won a fight? I'm a... <laughs> Got him again. All right, guys, have a good night. After <laughs> Hours show is starting. We live right now on the After Hours. See you then.